Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the latest episode of Mint Think Tank, powered by Salesforce, which turns the spotlight on India's education sector. I welcome you all to this event. About 5 billion people use the internet today, a large percentage of which are the youth and students. With technology forming such an integral part of our lives today, brands are going beyond the conventional modes of reaching out to customers and using a variety of strategies across multiple channels to improve their reach and connection. In this digital first landscape, digital transformation is not just limited to large corporations. Educational institutions such as colleges, universities, vocational and training institutes need to embrace digital technologies too to attract the right talent and to cater to the needs of their student community right from acquisition and onboarding all the way to becoming an alumnus. Creating a connected learner experience throughout the student's life cycle is the need of the hour. According to a report on online education in India done by KPMG and Google, India's online students cite peers and internet search as the top two sources of brand awareness. And they perceive convenience, flexibility with commencement dates and a variety of study materials as key motivational factors to adapt to the online channel. To cater to these changing expectations of the student of today, the education sector is witnessing an evolution in its very business model. With digital tools and platforms being deployed to engage students at every stage of the life cycle from prospects all the way to alumni. The latest episode of Mint Think Tech, the education track, is titled Student-Centric Education in a Digital First World. This takes us through this disruption that India's education space is in and the role technology can play to empower this change, right from attracting the right student base to training the trainers themselves. I'm your host. My name is Suresh Venkat. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome the esteemed panel for today's discussion. We have with us Mr. Sandeep Bansal is the director ICT at Reva University, Professor Anand, Vice Chancellor Chandigarh University, Mr. Deepak Pargamkar, Vice President Solution Engineering at Salesforce, and Mr. Mukesh Joshi, Associate Director and CTO at Plain University. Gentlemen, I look forward to an exciting conversation today. So without any further delay, let's, start it, let's get started with the discussion. First question is for Professor Anand. Professor Anand, India's higher education sector stands at the cusp of change, and the very means and methods of learning have undergone a dramatic transformation in a post-pandemic world. Can you share your experience at Chandigarh University with this transformation? Professor, you're on mute. Uh, can I ask you to unmute yourself first? Yes, Mr. Suresh. Um, the Indian education industry as such is under transformation. And this transformation actually is brought about by the pandemic. But in fact, this kind of transformation was long due. The pandemic has just accelerated the need for that transformation. This is basically the need for the future in the education industry all over the world. And because India is a part of the world and active member that is pioneering many creativity and innovation, plus the initiatives in the education sector, there is a need to, first of all, review and consolidate what the Indian higher education institutions like universities can do. Now, coming to the Chandigarh University, as any other progressive university in the world, we are at the stage where we are doing some things in parallel. Like for example, we are reviewing the possibilities. Of course, at the time of pandemic, we used digital technologies, but that was because of some kind of push that was not that was not a planned way to do the things. As all other universities have already approached that, we have done a fairly well job and we have been effective also. But we cannot stop there. This is an era of continuous improvement. So we want to be better. And we are working on improving a lot of our processes, systems, our structures, our technology, training and development for faculty members, making the students also ready to study using digital technologies. In fact, what is the need at this point of time is to create the whole ecosystem that can enable the digital technologies blended and hybrid learning and use of online means for education. The 
focus on just one or two dimensions will not give us the kind of outcome we expect the focus is on creating a full ecosystem and that is where chandigarh university is working at this point of time it is a long way to go and we are also partnering with some other organizations the governments with international universities outside the india and with other um, you can say ngos and institutions inside and outside india on these fronts so it's an exciting time for us we are enjoying these efforts because this is what future of education is to be uh, when we say transformation it's not a transformation is happening we are determined to make the to make the transformation happen we need to do it actively and that is where chandigarh university is working at this moment thank you thank you professor anand interesting point that you're saying that the transformation was already underway and the pandemic has accelerated the pandemic didn't start the transformation if, if, if the pandemic hadn't happened maybe it would have taken a little while longer but you would have still got here eventually that's what you're saying let me go to uh, sandeep bansal for my next question mr bansal reva university adopted a future ready technology based learning methods way back in 2016 well before the the words covid or the pandemic or anything they entered our vocabulary this is when traditional teaching methods student teacher teaching methods were the only way to learn now the as the landscape of education changed in 2020 how did students ex expectations change and how did you keep pace with this rapid transition and disruption that you uh, that you faced in 2020 yeah good evening uh, mr suresh uh, the question is very relevant uh, see uh, uh, in reva university um, i joined uh, two years back and uh, i uh, saw the university is very very you know excited to adopt the new challenges and uh, to look for new technologies which is available in the market our chancellor has been very very uh, you know innovative he always plan for next 5 years and he start uh, progressing university in the same way so in 2016 itself we started uh, you know creating our road map for digitalization of the university uh, during the 2020 pandemic time it was uh, you know uh, at certain level we see many institutions struggled a lot but it has been uh, due, because we have already started our journey so it took a you know couple of days us to switch over from offline to online now the students uh, uh, if you see um, education is transforming it is today it is happening after the pandemic but um, in other areas if you see all this is already a lot of transmission has happened students are uh, you know uh, using many medium whether it is udemy or coursera or many other platform from where they have been using or learning many uh, technologies the international certification provided by the many uh, you know um, what i say the oems uh, like cisco microsoft they all are uh, already in a, you know uh, online forum and the examination process is also very very refined only thing is that we are adopting this uh, new system now and uh, students are excited to adopt this system because uh, they have got two benefit one is uh, you could, uh, they can learn with their own comfort secondly during pandemic we realized that uh, giving online examination was a fun for the students so they really enjoyed it and uh, you know uh, they they were not wanted to come to the classroom and to appear in the exam due to a lot of pressure and stress and, uh, and during online uh, examination they got an advantage uh, you know to supersede uh, the invigilation so we tried a lot but uh, you and we always know what student have you know done during those examination time but uh, all together if i say uh, the digital mode which is coming in and the rapid transformation which is coming in we uh, at over the university level uh, we are adopting it and during the transformation size now we are looking towards how the blending learning we can provide to the students how the students can get those benefits uh, you know uh, by having a content e content ready uh the delivery of uh, lectures uh during the classroom how it can be uh you know well curated so those kind of things we are taking care of so that uh, this digital shift should not uh, uh you know impact their learning process all right let me now come to mr mukesh joshi let's take the discussion a little further 
Mr. Joshi, what is his mean for the sales and marketing function at Flame University? Now, your university offers an array of tools from online campus stores, social media presence, real-time grievance redressal, and online applications on your website. My question is, how have the sales and marketing teams evolved to keep pace with the generation of online-first, digital-first students and to help attract the right kind of student base? That's an interesting question, Mr. Shoes. Uh, good afternoon to everybody and esteemed panelists here and all the attendees at various platforms. So yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, you know, in, in, in these days, uh, I would say sales and marketing, you know, from an education perspective, people will be thinking about, hey, you know, uh, numbers and uh, leads. But let me tell you that uh, sales and marketing in shaping an institution, you know, quality over time plays a very, very vital role. So over the years, we have realized that we need to empower and train our sales and marketing uh, resources uh, and give them the tools to meaningfully engage with all our leads wherever they are. As we would all agree that over the years, technology has evolved so rapidly uh, that you know all of us around it need to keep pace with it. And that's what we had realized very, very early. And uh, you know, about 10 years ago, we started looking at future ready technologies, knowing the fact that the consumer behavior, I mean, specifically, of course, our, our prospective students, their content consumption patterns are also evolving and changing, you know, with new platforms and new mediums are, you know, coming, you know, at the best speed. Uh, we wanted to be agile in that space as well. So, so right from the uh, early days, we were very clear that, you know, let's keep up the pace with technology. Uh, look at adopting disruptive and cloud uh, technologies, you know, way back, uh, you know, if, if you go to see, you know, way back in 2010, 12, when we were actually very, very nascent, you know, our, our, our goal was clear that, you know, let's not go for technologies where it will create a debt for you rather than, you know, empowering you. So, you know, we have from day one adopted cloud ready technologies. Uh, knowing the fact that technology will change and we need to keep up the pace. And I think uh, I'm glad that, you know, we kept that mindset because uh, we were able to adopt disruptive technologies, keep up the pace with changes, and keep all our stakeholders energized and interested in, in adopting new technologies. And uh, I think uh, the likes of, you know, you know I'll, I'll take the name here, you know, you know we, we use Salesforce as a platform in, in, in for past several years, and there was one of our uh, interesting moves uh, to actually you know, be ready. Uh, because you know, a lot, it's just not about one platform, but there is an ecosystem of platforms that has come over the years where mm -hmm. the platforms talk to each other. Uh, if you are stuck with a technology where you know you are in silo, then you know you are missing out uh, in the space of you know uh, consumer engagement. In particularly, your question is with sales and marketing. So I think. Yep. That's where I believe we have been very, very uh, forward-looking and fortunate to kind of adopt the disruptive and forward-looking technologies. Uh, we have empowered all our uh, sales and marketing engineers uh, with you know, mobile-ready solutions where, you know, of course, uh, their jobs and profiles require us to be, you know, on the field also, face-to-face -face with our prospect students and uh, giving, them the, giving them the ability to, you know, consume the prospective student data anytime, anywhere, wherever they need mm -hmm. has also added you know, you know, uh, tremendously into their productivity. And, and of course, uh, as you, we all agree that people are more online than offline these days, so being able to track their preferences, you know, uh, you go to the website as a student and you skim to various pages and, you know, uh, when you have right technologies in place, right insights in place, then you can make the most of the very few minutes of uh, I would say consumer mm -hmm. interactions that you have. That opportunity mm -hmm. is there. You have just you know first few minutes to cater to students' needs, and you know, and, and, and technologies like this help us build the story and, and look at the insight before you actually talk to the students or prospective students. Give them meaningful insights and meaningful information, then just going to a conventional route as you know, throwing the information at our students rather than understanding what they need, what their behavior is, where they are what areas they're interested in, and then go prepared and, and, and help them better mm -hmm. choose the stream that we, we offer at the university. So I think from a sales and marketing standpoint, I think our focus on technology has paid off well. 
why because you know these days there is an information overload also right you know there is a lot of information now that you have to scan through you know and, and sometimes it gets very very difficult to differentiate between quality leads and leads that are just there out there in the market so you know uh, in that sense also you know slicing and dicing analytics the lead scoring uh, you know and you know so all those factors help us focus on the right mm-hmm. set of students uh, and of course as you would say you know as the quality that you bring in will shape you as an university in years to come so mm-hmm. i mean you know and the funnel that our admissions teams looks at highly depends on the level of quality work that is done at the phase in my front so yeah i think in in, in being a technocrat i believe that technology uh, is at the forefront uh, and and of course is an enabler for us all here hope that made sense actually hope that thank you thank you now uh, Muk- yeah yeah absolutely mukesh joshi used the word technology i think about 15 times in his answer i i sort of tried to keep <laughs> track so let's go to mr technology himself uh, <laughs> let me let me go to deepak pargamkar of course mr pargamkar in a digital first world uh, like mukesh joshi was saying how can technology be used to create what's called a 360 degree view the full recruitment funnel from recruiting to application to management to onboarding give us a sense of where we stand technology Thanks a lot Suresh it's and it's a privilege to be on this panel and uh, like audience i was glued to the conversation and what my fellow panelists were talking about one thing i noticed what everyone spoke about was student student and student so essentially yeah. behavior of the student the way in which engagement with the students happen and the way in which options are provided to the students and the learning of the students and the overall journey now this is what we call when we as a technology company build the solutions specifically for some of the verticals education being one of the important ones we see that universities institutions are now keeping student at the center of their universe and what do we mean by that when we say student is at the center of the universe see there are processes there are personas and there are systems and everyone has spoken about that processes everyone spoke about admission process you spoke about the recruitment process application process mukesh spoke about the sales and marketing process and various other processes once the even student is onboarded it is the engagement that the student has during the association i think initially suresh you spoke about the alumni also once the student graduates becomes an alumni and yep, there also yep. there are processes so these are several processes channels anyway all of us are experiencing everyone spoke about that online offline hybrid mobile first and what not these are the channels there are processes and personas in the organization or in the institutions or universities today we have several personas around the student we have student counselors we have most important members which is staff the teachers who make the students but at the same time the admission of office the finance now at all these places all these channels there is some process some data that gets created and it is important that we have a single platform which a gets all the data together gives the same visibility and the relevant visibility to each and every stakeholder to have that meaningful engagement conversation and engagement with the student and all of this i actually deliver through technically what we call it as a student 360 and how the data gets or the system gets delivered very simple without going into the technical details of that every system works on what we call it as a data model so you have student defined and everything associated with that student defined and you get all the right data getting generated from multiple sources together and start working on those processes so that's how technology can be leveraged to create what we can probably call it as a student 360 so that's suresh to start with what exactly that student 360 is and how technology can be leveraged to create that student 360 all right so from answer i got processes personas and systems there's the three most important pillars of this kind of transformation 
All right, let me come back to Sandeep Bansal. Mr. Bansal, the pandemic also brought with it a need for a sea change in the mindsets for the teacher fraternity. Now, teachers were left grappling with the transition suddenly to online learning, struggling to deliver high quality lessons through a blended learning approach while learning a whole new bunch of digital tools. So my question is now teacher centric. What steps can be taken to train the trainers to make them comfortable with technology and ever evolving technology so they can make the best use of it? So you have actually touched the uh, very painful nerve of uh, the uh, you know community. So I can understand uh, <clears throat> uh, this is uh, uh, basically now the train the trainers has to be developed. Uh, there should be uh, what I say uh, regular training programs has to be organized within the campuses. But before that, uh, uh, I understand uh, there is a very very uh, you know um, particular need of. Uh, you know, picking up a right tool. Because what happens, uh, we are training to the trainers is uh, uh, what we are talking about. It depends upon the tool, how easy it is. It has to be user-centric. Now what happens, uh, you have a tool where you have to enter n number of data. So when you have to enter that data, you need to type and you know, should know the typing as well. But if the tool itself is having, uh, you know, all the things picked up from the system and truly integrated with each one. So the need of typing those content is very less. So it becomes very easy for them just on the click of buttons, they can do all those things. When I'm saying the integration part, so that is not only about a teacher, if you see from a teacher standpoint, he don't only really need to prepare for the lecture. He has to create a PPT. He has to deliver the PPT. He has to take the attendance. He has to ensure all the students are present examination, so many things are there. So uh, I feel the transition or this transformation which we are talking about should make the life of each and every uh, one uh, who is associated in this entire process easy. So for that purpose, we should understand trainer trainer is a one part. Second thing is we should have uh, some uh, you know uh, insight or uh, planning to ensure there should be a team who is focused towards creating the content for the teachers so that the delivery becomes only the part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, we have to understand there is, you know, everybody is not a designer. Everybody is not a content writer. Everybody cannot face the camera. So these kind of things are very, very important. And we have to understand when we are asking a trainer is best in training. You can ask, they can leave the lecture the way they want, right? But if you ask them to, you know, uh, prepare a lecture using all these things, I remember during a pandemic, there were certain trainers what they are, they're writing their lectures on the notebooks and using the camera and showing the students that, please use I've this. seen that, yeah. Yeah, so that, they, yeah. they used all the means to train their students, right? But I'm, I'm trying to say that trainer, trainer is one part, but it, it may not be possible. Everybody is so good in learning these new technologies. So how to help them? So we have to have the team who is basically working 24 by 7 or sometime to create the content for these trainers so that they can just use that content, deliver their lecture and go home. So those kind of simplicity we have to bring. Second thing is in education system, uh, you know, I have seen a lot of vendors comes showcase their solution, pitch in and what happens we pick up that solution because we are not subject matter expert as a, uh, you know, educationist. So there's a right, you know, as subject matter experts are required, they can evaluate the solution. So what happens when you have a right solution in place, they integrate so well, the data which is coming from, as you said, acquisition till alumni status, the entire student life cycle, mm -hmm. you can see the data remains same. Otherwise, I've seen due to multiple application, the name of a student which has filled during the application time till his yeah, DP, yeah. the name gets changed. So those kind of, you know, mistakes can be avoided. And these mistakes, sometimes students pay a lot for the entire life. So these are my thought, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. in this digital world, we can train the trainers, but we also need to see how much training is required, how we can simplify their life. That is more important. Yeah, yeah. I think the key word that you use is simplify. No loading them with so many technological gizmos that they're struggling with the technology itself. Their core is teaching. Okay, I'm going to 
change the discussion a little bit. Ian's question now. I think Professor Anand is well placed to answer this question. Professor Anand, uh, Dr. Yadavda Padmasai asks on the Q and A forum. He says faculty are ready to adopt the new technology, uh, blended learning, digital learning, but students are not ready. Some students are not ready in his environment. How can you adapt to such a challenge? The challenge is or not. That's a good question. See, when we talk about students coming to the university for learning, there is a psychological contract between the student and the university. The contract is what will be the mode of teaching and learning. When they got admissions in 2017-18-19, the batch which is running in the universities in graduation programs, they didn't set a contract to go for blended or online learning. It's the pandemic that has pushed us to go for online learning in the universities all over the world. So psychologically, students have not been ready to go for online digital blended learning approach. And then there is a need to first of all understand in depth about the requirements to get prepared from everyone. Every stakeholder has to be prepared to go for an effective blended hybrid and online teaching and learning practices. Now, as education industry players and leaders, we all try to do our best, right? But can we all say honestly that we have really been very effective in terms of delivering a high quality online blended hybrid teaching and learning? Mm -hmm. We did our best. Most of the universities in the world have been, have been doing it and they did their best, but there was not much preparation. There's no time for it, right? Now, when we step back and consolidate what we have done, review it, and then start planning the whole ecosystem that requires training of faculty members, getting the students also ready, and the time when they come for orientation, or they, when we offer them in the first hand, that students, we are offering you blended and hybrid program. It's not that they get admission in a regular program and then they start studying the blended program. So it, is, it has to start from that scratch, from that kind of, uh, you can say, proactive planning, which should be futuristic, and that should create an ecosystem from all the stakeholders about a digital uh, use of technology, digital technologies for blended, hybrid, digital or tech-enabled teaching and learning. What we have been doing is a khanapurti in Hindi, what you say, right? And <laughs> If we keep on doing like that, it is not going to take us anywhere. It's time for us to step back and create ecosystems, create trainings, get the whole, all the stakeholders ready for it. That is what Chandigarh University has been trying to do. Okay. Let me come to Mukesh Joshi now. Um, Mr. Joshi, I'm sure that you, more than you, nobody else can agree to the fact that technology can be a major catalyst for innovative changes across campuses. At a high level, what kind of tech-enabled new age strategies are you deploying at Flame to connect with all stakeholders, and by, by which I mean students, teachers, alumni, industry, all of them? How are you creating this sort of interconnection? Sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Suresh, for making my life easier, asking me the question where I could uh, have the experience to, you know... Uh, yeah, your core, your core strategy, yeah. Yes, yeah. thank you. So uh, I'll, I'll take uh, all of you a bit, you know, I'll take a step back before I answer this. So I think first thing that we did is get rid of technology that we should not have. Then we went ahead and looked for technologies that you know can help us uh, scale in the future. So when when we realized that hey you know uh, where the typical organizations are struggling, I mean what, what is the elephant in the room is your uh, you know outdated systems uh, and and people glued to outdated systems not wanting to get rid of them, not wanting to let those systems go. And, and that was one of the first steps in, in, in you know, actually making way for uh, future. So, you know, we, we by paying, we, we got rid of those systems first, you know, we moved away from uh, network centered uh, silo applications, uh, got rid of them first, and then we uh, focused on cloud only and cloud ready technologies. And then, you know, over time, you know, uh, I could say that most of what we do today 
is only cloud platforms uh, with top notch security and service and of course uh, you know i have had you know uh, uh, professor uh, sandeep sir you know was mentioning about you know one tooth database you know it's it's at different places one name is entered here at the time of application and the information is different at the time you graduate so i i echo with him totally and uh, you know and, and it is not something uh, very you know i would say rare it it, it, it happens in, in many at many places where discrete systems are there uh, siloed departments are there holding on to their code so you know that's the first challenge that you know if, if you were to ask me is you know first get rid of what you don't need don't go after you know getting something new first find out what is not working and then you know look in look into the future and uh, what we have been doing for past several years now is you know looking at each and every area of the university making sure that every stakeholder right from the uh, prospect uh, to uh, the enroll to the application enrollment student journey uh, and then the person becomes alumni all of that is back in one single database that has been the theme and that has been you know our overall uh, vision uh, in the in the technology department and i'm not there at 100% but i could say that you know i'm very well on the path uh, to you know achieve that and and, and i am doing that by by uh, you know being cloud ready uh, being uh, using technology that you know i can easily adopt you know people the olden days of technology was you know hey code code in code now i think we need to move away from that not everybody is a programmer not everybody is a technocrat so how would you automate mm-hmm. the processes you know so now mm-hmm. the technology has made life easier for a lot of organizations you know uh, medium to you know small to medium size organization can also dream of using world class enterprise uh, platforms which is a big change uh, that i've seen in my journey as a technocrat if you want it best of the breed you have to be you know the big guy and and, and invest big but i think that has come to a, a you know i would say paradigm shift even even small to mid size organizations can use the same technologies and platforms that toyotas mm-hmm. of the mm-hmm. world are using and, and and that's where i think uh, the cloud computing has really uh, immensely helped techno- help the companies and the institutions that are open to change uh, that are open to take some tough calls to get rid of you know legacy systems and in order of the new age technologies so uh, you know right from you know the cost of reputation at the right from prospects enrollment student journey all of that for us is now moving on to cloud platforms and giving the key stakeholders insights from the one database only and i i can't agree more with uh, you know sandeep ji on, on what he mentioned you know silo systems uh, is is where you know your bottlenecks are try and get to a common database give a 360 degree view of your prospects as well as students to all the stakeholders once they have the entire journey once they have the information at different stages in one place you will see there there is a swift action in decision making you will see a quick turnaround time in solving problems of the students or the prospects and you in general as a university or head of a particular department are able to make uh, decisions that are backed with data not with intuition or somebody's whims and fancies so i think that's where i believe our journey has been our focus has been you know uh, uh, you know try and get all your processes uh data points into a uh, common secure enterprise world class platform mm-hmm. and, and, and then you will see it it's pain taking journey but when the rewards come uh, you will be surprised by what you will see so yeah i think that's our story and i encourage all of us to think out of the box and 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 you know and try and learn from each other and and see what works and what doesn't okay thank Hope you mr joshi yeah that makes sense to you yeah perfect makes perfect sense so uh, i have a suggestion for mr deepak padgaonkar uh, actually a slogan present but is technology in the back end simplicity in the front end i think that's the key of uh, theme in this back end the complex technology in the back but for students and for teachers and alumni you need utter simplicity on front I'm just going to ask a quick question to Mr. Sandeep Bansal before I come to Deepak Pargaon again. Mr. Bansal, uh, Professor Sai again asks uh, another question. Uh, Dr. Sai says 15 to 20 percent of students, one fifth, are unable to buy laptops or sophisticated devices. 
as a US, how to handle this because with chip shortages and supply chain shortages, the cost of technology, especially for end users, should go up a bit. How do you handle this? So, uh, sir, uh, there are multiple uh, reasons behind it. As you rightly said, there's a chip shortage and the cost is going high. Uh, uh, you know, in many cases, many educational institutions, they have tried to help the uh, students uh, during the procurement of these devices. However, uh, the OEMs currently, they are also providing uh, multiple, uh, you know, student purchase programs. In, in the case when the student is uh, from the marginal low, uh, you know, uh, family. So there are NGOs, those are helping them out to, uh, you know, uh, get these devices to uh, complete their learning. So uh, here I would like to sum up that way is that if somebody want to uh, study, there are many uh, and multiple ways where, uh, you know, their needs can be accomplished. And uh, the government is also providing many kind of support, uh, you know, in terms of financial support or providing the digital uh, devices. In many uh, uh, colleges, uh, OEM supported students by giving them, uh, you know, uh, on EMI, they can buy it. So it depends upon student to student about uh, how he can, you know, like to get this, uh, you know, device procured. But uh, one thing for sure, um, in India, India is the only country where everybody, whether it is of any age or caste or religion, they have a mobile with them. Right. And uh, the data has become so cheap. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure if, uh, you know, things are cool and uh, they want to really, uh, you know, study, uh, the mobile itself is uh, sufficient because many uh, you know, application is providing a platform which is mobile friendly and uh, they can uh, study well uh, using that device as well. So I think, uh, uh, you know, this can uh, help them out. Mr. Prakaukar, in today's times when millennials are glued to devices, I think Mr. Bansal just talked about how the cell phone is actually the new computer. Now, millennials, Gen Z, glued to devices, instant gratification has become the order of the day. What kind of digital tools and platforms uh, can be deployed by education institutions to engage students at, at every stage of the life cycle? Once again, from prospects to alumni, uh, it's been said that we live in an era of very short consideration span. Maybe our attention span is longer, but our consideration span has to be instant. So how do you use technology to gratify this audience? Once more, or uh, once again, very relevant and uh, pretty pertinent question. Look at our own behaviors also. And our uh, young generation's behavior. Everything mobile driven. They want to book any ticket. They want to connect with their friends. It's all just on fingertips of their mobile devices. Coming back to the technology, I mean, you should spoke about what kind of processes, systems, as well as personas in Student 360, uh, the technologies are provided. Just talking from a Salesforce perspective, we kind of are bringing the CRM capabilities or Student 360 capabilities for the educational sector. And we are engaging with a lot of institutions. Now, Talking about the specifics, there could be a portal enabled on the mobile. That's the first point of interaction. And today we are in an anytime, anywhere world. For anyone, you spoke about instant gratification. The meaning mm -hmm. of that is simple, that I want resolution, I want access, I want information at the time and place of my choosing. Because that's the way we are all used. We buy the airline ticket at our convenience. Similarly, on the education institute, if I have a problem with my facility, I have to connect with my teacher, I have to connect with maybe supervisor or whatever. Yep. At the hand, on my hand, I have my mobile. I should be able to connect, communicate. That's the first thing. So we talk about the portal, the interface, which is mobile enabled. Now, the other hand, the stakeholders who are going to engage with student, and there are many of them, they also should be in a collaborative environment. So that collaboration is also important. And today, what is happening? We are kind of in a world where messaging is the way of engaging, even for any business communication. There are many collaboration platforms. Many of us use different platforms. Some of them are predominant, and we know which of them are predominant. 
the communication, the resolution, it all is on those platforms. So once you start engaging at any level, you are a prospect, you are a student who has already got onboarded and has a need to connect with different stakeholders. Here is a system, which is what we call it as an omni-channel, device independent, providing 360 platform. So data consolidates at one system. And I think I heard everyone talking about it. And you spoke about content being very simple. So yes, very mm -hmm. easy to access, very easy to use, and user friendly. That's the front end part. And in the back end, every data element consolidated in a single place, processes on same platform. Now, all these things are across the life cycle. And I heard Professor Anand also spoke about, I really like some terms Professor Anand you spoke about, the contract of learning between the mm -hmm. staff and the student. Uh, took me back to my college days actually. But yeah, it is the entire life cycle and all through the life cycle. And the organizations and the institutions are engaging the students in different ways at different levels, not only during the undergrad studies, but maybe there are some executive courses. Maybe there are some specific online courses for which you need to communicate. And Mr. Joshi spoke about the omni-channel communication for marketing purposes. You are communicating about the programs that your institute is offering and all of them at right time, at the right place on the right device. So, the capabilities, like what I'm talking about from a Salesforce perspective, the solution focused on education sector, which allows the institutes to create that 360 and enables the necessary front-end collaboration, processes, and analysis are the capabilities that the institutes, and we have seen that. And uh, the esteemed panelists have also said that. They all are practitioners. They are deploying, they have deployed the systems, and that's the way. The way in which millennials are developing, instant access, easy, anytime, anywhere. And that's the way the capabilities of the solutions are also getting built. And we are also providing the similar solutions. So, yeah, very relevant and pertinent questions, Suresh. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pagampa. All right, we're almost at the end of this discussion. Lots of insights in this discussion, as many members in the audience would know. And thank you, audience members, for your questions as well. I'm going to pose the final question to Professor Anand. Professor Anand, according to recent research done by PwC India and CII, and the study was titled Re-Envisioning Higher Education Through Digital Adoption. Now, both teachers and students in India have shown a marked preference, and this is important, a marked preference for blended learning, which combines the physical and virtual, what's called a digital sort of learning experience through a combination of classroom lessons, online tools, and platforms as well. So what does the future hold for the Indian education industry as a whole? If you ask this question uh, from an educator like me, who is also a practitioner, plus who is also seeing the whole environment of the education system, with the uh, ongoing national education policy 2022, we all know about that. It's a, the whole Indian education system is at a transient stage at this point of time. And we all are feeling that transition happening. There's a lot of things ongoing at this point of time. As I have been talking about the ecosystem, uh, Mr. Deepak Paragankar is also talking about the technology, the enablement, the network, uh, engaging the stakeholders. I think at this point of time, the Indian education system needs a lot of collaborations and partnerships from mm. multiple institutions, which may not be directly related to education only, but may be somehow related to the education industry uh, and also technology industry, right? So what we need to do is to create a community of people who are like think tanks and also who can make an impact in the education industry. I'm very glad with the movements which are being there from UGC and from the national education policy, the initiatives are really very strong. And I've seen it all over the world because I have experience of working in six different countries, in other parts of the world. Actually, we are going to be very much global in terms of our approach, in terms of our working in the education sector very soon. 
with the direction of the NEP and UGC. So it's a challenge. Indian education industry is at a challenging stage. Is at a transition stage where we have to mm -hmm. learn, relearn, sometimes unlearn, and then cooperate with each other. It's a time for collaboration. Competition is there, but competition is the future. We need to collaborate with other institutions. We need to cooperate with the other industry players of other other sectors. We need to have partnerships from organizations like Coursera, LinkedIn Learning, etc., to come up successfully with these challenges. Challenges, because you know, we all talk about India being superpower. We also talk about India having largest number of youth. But at the same time, we also talk about the problems and the gaps, the things which we need to come up as a superpower, and education cannot be left behind. So at this transition time, I think we all need to cooperate. We need to plan properly, and we need to work together with other sectors to basically impact the education system. That is starting from the scratch to to review how we teach, how we learn. To review the use of technology, to review, to review the, how we train faculty members, how to change mindsets of students and faculty members and other staff members on how to adopt digital. It's not just using a tool; it's the changing of the mindsets which are also required at the same time. So, whole gamut of you know uh, working in different dimensions is required. And if you see Chandigarh University, if you see the kind of programs we are offering online, also we are we are already working on that front. But when we talk about blended, it's a different game. We cannot just say, okay, just add some classes in the online and make it blended. But just add some online things in a regular physical class, it is blended. No, it is not blended. So we have to also understand what is needed properly. All right, that brings us to the end of this discussion. And Deepak Palgaonkar, thank you very much for being part of this Mint Think Tank. Remember, the boss, the most important uh, currency in today's world is time. So thank you for parting with us. And thank you for asking questions to our panelists. Now, this brings us to the end of this session. I'd also like to thank Salesforce for partnering with us. Thank you for all, gentlemen, for your insights. We'll be back together with another insightful session. Till then, stay well and as always, stay safe and take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, members of the audience.